successfully treating implantation failure and recurrent pregnancy loss is undoubtedly a challenge for doctors and for patients. It is an area on which we continuously focus research at Instituto Bernabeu, and whilst we are far from finding a solution to all problems, the number of couples we are able to successfully treat is forever increasing. An approach which does not take all three parties into account, the female, the male and the embryo, is incomplete. When evaluation only takes the couple into account, the reason behind the issue is only determined in under 20% of all cases. An implantation failure or recurrent pregnancy loss study should begin by gathering thorough and detailed clinical data, starting with family background, an interview of each member of the couple, an analysis of work or environmental exposure to toxins, and a lifestyle evaluation. This is prior to getting into more specific aspects, such as a sperm analysis, an analysis of the uterus, a study of the immune system, and other tests which we will now cover. Genetics plays an essential role within multidisciplinary research. Genetic tests can identify the cause of reproductive issues. By using the most advanced diagnosis techniques, such as DNA arrays and next-generation sequencing, when studying the couple or the embryo, we can offer our patients personalized treatment and achieve the birth of a healthy child. Before transfer, we are able to determine if the embryo is a carrier of chromosomal abnormalities, which may lead to either pregnancy loss or severe malformations. At Instituto Bernabeu, we have high-resolution ultrasounds, which, when combined with powerful software tools, provide a highly detailed study of the uterine cavity, and in particular, of a little understood illness, adenomyosis, which is linked to an increased risk of pregnancy loss and implantation failure. As our research, which has been published in prestigious specialist magazines, has shown, subendometrial vascularization and endometrial cavity volume, or uterine contractions, on the day of the embryo transfer can provide essential information in patients suffering from implantation failure and recurrent pregnancy loss. Cases of this kind are extremely complex. Therefore, our in vitro fertilization laboratory concentrates specifically on the embryo and carries out numerous lines of research in order to increase potential for implanting in the mother's uterus. We have four main lines of activity. The first consists of ensuring optimum nutrition for the embryo during development, as well as improving cultivation conditions in special incubators, which are specific to each patient. Secondly, Understanding the chromosome level in the embryo using CCS means we are able to select embryos which are free of chromosome abnormalities. This is of utmost importance since it's essential to take into account that most cases of implantation failure and or pregnancy loss are due to a chromosome abnormality in the embryo. A biopsy carried out on the outer layer of the embryo on day 5 or 6 of cultivation and an evaluation using advanced molecular biology and genetics techniques fundamentally next-generation sequencing, means we are able to do screening with the very best guarantees. This eliminates the risks undertaken during embryo biopsies and reduces the possibility of error in the diagnosis to the bare minimum. In the third place, and whilst it is a matter of continuous controversy, an opening in the zona pellucida, or outer layer of the embryo using laser pulses, improves implantation in some very special cases. This technique is known as assisted zona hatching. In some cases, a fourth course of action is contemplated, freezing all the embryos and, rather than transferring them in the same cycle as the one during which they are obtained, doing it later on. This may be during a spontaneous cycle or with pharmacological assistance. This helps the endometrium, which is free of stimulating drugs, to have characteristics which are as similar as possible to those in a natural cycle, thus making it more receptive. Embryo survival rates following defrosting are very nearly 100%. There are other future options which we are currently developing, but mainly from a research point of view. One of them is the development of embryonic genetic expression patterns or the transcriptome. It is possible that embryo environmental and biological factors play an important role in the transcriptome and this information may therefore prove to be a great use in the future. Within a study, evaluating the structure and architecture of the uterine cavity is essential. The best test for this is a hysteroscopy, which consists of looking directly at the spot where the embryo implants. 
During a hysteroscopy, we often carry out an endometrial biopsy. There are two reasons for this. The first is to get an understanding of the histology of the endometrium, and at the same time, the wound, or scratch as it is often called, will mean an endometrium re-epithelialization, and in some cases, this can improve endometrium receptivity. Studies of this kind ought not to be limited to the genital area. Sometimes metabolism or endocrine disorders cause recurrent pregnancy loss, and therefore an evaluation of this side of the problem is also part of a global study. A personalized nutritional assessment is carried out, when necessary, in order to correct weight issues or inappropriate eating habits, which may be reducing one member of the couple's ability to reproduce, or which may be negatively affecting embryo implantation and increasing the risk of pregnancy loss. We also use adequate diets to try and improve certain associated illnesses, such as endometriosis, amongst others, in which nutrition is an important immunomodulatory factor. Last of all, this unit deals with the diagnosis and treatment of endocrine disorders which can coexist. For example, diabetes, cholesterol disorders, thyroid disorders, and arterial hypertension, amongst others, which affect fertility and obscure treatment results. Once all the tests have been carried out, they are shared with the multidisciplinary committee dealing with implantation failure. The gynecologist in charge of the couple outlines all the information gathered and the course of treatment which may lead to a successful outcome is determined by the team.